earn a view for that annotation. I think for speed here I have something, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so this is going to do what we saw on the slides where it's gonna have a reuse ID. I like, this by the way is a good code snippet to have. You can see this is kind of completely generic for doing a view for annotation in a map view. Um, I like to use the name of my class sometimes as my reuse identifier. That's a pretty unique uh, thing to do for reuse. Here's the DQ. If the DQ doesn't work, I have to alloc init this thing. I still want it to show a call out. I want it to be a pin. And then here I'm setting up the view with anything I need to set up here. It's just setting the annotation. Um, so inside here is where we want to set up the left and right accessory views. So let's do that. So the left one is going to be UI image view. Okay, so I'm going to create an image view here. UI image view alloc init. And I'm going to actually alloc init with frame. And this is one of the places in iOS I really don't like. There is no way, no API to find out how big is that call out. Okay, because I'd really like to know how big that call out is so I can make my image view be a good size to really fit there. Okay, so this is a place you have to unfortunately put magic numbers. Okay, and the magic numbers I found that really work is an image view that is 46 by 46. That seems to really fit nicely in that left uh, call out accessory view right there. So that's an, um, kind of an unfortunate piece of this. So now I'm just going to set that as the left call out accessory view. And then the right one is going to be a button. I just want to do a button, so I think I have code for that one, yeah, disclosure button. So that's this code right here. So I'm just going to create a UI button, alloc init. Okay, I'm going to set its background image to be this disclosure image I have right here. So let me go down here to my image assets and let's drag this in. Like that, disclosure, I don't have a high res version, but that's okay. This is kind of, your, this is not a great solution, by the way, to do an image here because really we want to respect the tint color of the map view and that arrow is blue, so that's bad. It would be much better to either draw it, or if we are going to use an image, you should come to Friday's section and understand how to change the color of an image using core image. Okay, that's what we're talking about in Friday's section this week. A uh, little plug for that. But anyway, for demo purposes, I'll use this thing. Then I'm going to size to fit this button to fit that image that I just did, and then I'm going to set it as the right call-out accessory view right there. Okay, question? depending on the amount of objects you have? Or? Uh, you mean is the, the, the uh, you know, I'm not sure. I believe it will size. If you make a big view in there, it'll make it bigger, but it starts to not look very good. So you kind of want to pick sizes that make it stay the same size because the title and subtitle, it's a little bit, uh, the whole thing with the call out thing is a little bit kind of, you have to tweak it pixel by pixel or point by point, unfortunately. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we got so far. All right, so now if we look at a photo and we do the call out, we have room for the image. We're not putting the image in there yet. And we have this little button, which when we click on does nothing. Okay, so we're getting closer. So let's put this image in there and let's make it so clicking on this segues. All right, so how do we put this uh, image into the image view? Well, I'm going to have a little method to do it here called, what did I call this? Update left call accessory, yeah. So here's my method that does this. This looks like maybe a lot of code, but it's actually not that much. Mostly what I'm doing is introspection to find out if the left callout accessory view is in fact an image view. Because I might have multiple pins with different callouts. Some of them might be showing photos, but some might be showing something else. And maybe those are something else. They don't have an image view as the left callout accessory view. All right, so I'm both checking to make sure that my call, left callout is an image view. I'm also checking to make sure my annotation is a photo. Right, and not something else. Because it's perfectly reasonable on a map to have annotations, some of which are photos, some of which are something else, okay? The hometown of the photographer or something like that. Um, so that's what mostly what this is, is just this introspection of those things. Once I have a photo and an image view, then all I'm doing is this horrendous image with image data, data with contents of URL. And why is it horrendous? Of course, because I'm blocking the main queue, but this is a demo, so I get to do it. You don't get to do it in your homework. But I do. So this is going to block the main thread for a short amount while it goes out to Flickr to fetch it. But um, you get the idea. I put the warning in. I'm sure I'll go back and fix it some other day. Yes, sure. OK. Um, so that's that. Let's go ahead and look at that. All right. So now if we click on something and we click on a pin, 
Hopefully, we'll get an image. Maybe that guy didn't have. Oh no, that's not working. Why is that not work? Oh, I no, that's not why. Uh, okay, sorry. Oh, I see why. <laughs> because we never call this. Okay, it'd be nice to call that. It'd probably work better. So let's call that from here. Okay, this is the view for annotation. So I'm calling this left call out here from view for annotation, right? Because I'm returning the little view for annotation. That includes building the call out view. So that'll work a lot better, I'm going to guess. All right, so here we go here. Click this up. So nice, that looks pretty good, right? So if we click on each one, we kind of get a little look at it and kind of helps us decide which one we want to step on. If we press on, we'll press on this one. Now there's a problem with the way I've done this, though. Let's find somebody who has a lot of photos. Hopefully somebody has a lot of photos. Somebody, well. Uh, it looks like 15 photos, of the, or 16. All right, so let's click on this guy. When I click on this guy, look, it's taking a long time. Okay, this is a fast Stanford network, so uh, it's not too slow, but it's still, it's blocking the main thread, but it's blocking the main thread a lot. And why is that? That's because it's fetching the thumbnail image for all 16 of those photos, okay? Uh, all at once up front. So we do not want to do that. We only want to do this fetch when you click on the pin. So we're going to implement another map view delegate method, and you can see how many methods, delegate methods, the map view has quite a few. We want this one down here, did select annotation view. That gets called when the pin gets clicked on. So I'm just going to move this update left call out accessory view down to here. Okay, so now when we run, even this 16 guy is going to instantly come up because he's not doing any fetching. But when we click on this, a little delay. Okay, now I can't see all 16 of his things because they're all stacked up. It's a little problem with our UI. We would probably want to have some way to click other ones, you can kind of click other ones, but um, anyway. Uh, but now we want to, if I click here, I want to see this image in my image view controller full size. So now let's implement this uh, little thing. And that is going to do, we're going to do with another map view delegate method. This is the one I told you about. Call out accessory touched It's the one up here. See it? Call out accessory control tapped. Okay, so this gets called whenever any left or right accessory view that is a UI control, like UI button is, gets tapped. This gets called. Now I only have one because the image view is not a UI control, so I don't have to worry about that. So inside here, I can segue. Okay? But now, how do I segue? Okay? I've never shown you how to do this. We did cover it in the slides, but I never showed you. How do I actually segue from here? Because if I go back to my storyboard, there's no pins for me to control drag from. How do I, it's, uh, what am I going to do? Okay, so what we're going to do here is segue from code, and here's how you segue from code. You control drag from the from view controller to the to view controller, just from the whole view controller, not from any button in here or anything like that. And if you had a lot of buttons in here, you could control back, drag from this bar so you don't accidentally control drag from a button. So I'm just going to, and I'm not control dragging from the map view here, okay? In fact, here I'm going to control drag from down here, okay? So here's my um, photos by photographer. Here's the, con the uh, icon that represents the controller itself. So I'm going to control drag from here up to this guy, if I can reach him. Oh well, trust me. I'm going to control drag from here to here. Okay, there we go. No, this to here. Sorry. There we go. All right, so I'm going to control drag from this view controller to this one. So I'm creating a segue here from that view controller to the other one, generically, from the controller to the other controller. And it's very important here I have to give it a name. So I'm going to call it show photo, because that's what it does. It shows this photo. Okay. Why do I need to give it a name? Because from code, I have to refer to this segue, and I'm going to refer to it by name. Okay, I'm going to call it the show photo. So let's go back and do that. This is a one-liner. I just say self, and I'm going to call this method in UI view controller, UI view controller called perform segue with identifier. And here I specify show photo. And notice I get to specify a sender. Okay, where does this sender come in? Well, this segue that I'm going to perform in code here still gets prepared for segue. It's a normal push segue, so it has to prepare for segue. And if we remember prepare for segue, it takes a sender. And what is that sender? Well, in the table view controller case, remember the sender is the table view cell. So what would we want the, uh, the sender to be here? Probably this annotation view. Okay? This annotation view right here is the annotation view that 
has the call out that we tapped that accessor view in. So that's going to tell us which annotation we're talking about, right? So that's the sender that we're going to see when we go do prepare for segue for this thing, all right? All right, so let's do the prepare for segue because this is a normal segue. It has to be prepared just like all the rest of the uh, segues that we have. And to do that, I'm going to, just like I did in table view, I'm, I have a little prepare here, which is right here. And this prepare kind of generally will prepare uh, this map view controller to segue to an image view controller. Okay? And it looks a lot like the other one. Okay, here I'm going to find out if the annotation that we're going to prepare. So we're going to prepare for view controller. This is going to be an image view controller to do a certain segue to show a certain annotation. And this had better be a photo because that's all I know how to do. So I'm checking here to make sure it's a photo. And if it is a photo, then I'm going to check the identifier. Same thing with table view. If there's no identifier, then if the kind of class is an image view controller class, then I'm going to segue to it. Okay, so this, I'm going to call this from prepare for segue in a second. Let me go ahead and import image view controller. Okay, just so we don't have the warnings there. So everyone understand what this code does? Well, I do the code snippets for speed, but I want to make sure you understand all the code that appeared there. Okay. All right, so now we can do the prepare for segue, and it's going to be pretty easy. So void prepare for segue. Okay, and in prepare for segue, the sender is that MK annotation view, right? So we know from that MK annotation view which uh, thing it is. So I'm just going to say if the sender is an MK annotation view, which it should be, okay, then I'm going to call this prepare thing that I did up here, this prepare view controller. Prepare view controller. And the view controller I'm going to prepare is segue.destination view controller. The segue is the segue's identifier. Oops, identifier. And the annotation we're going to show is what? The annotation is this sender, which is an MK annotation view, it's its annotation. So MK annotation view has a property called annotation, which returns to the ID MK annotation, that, uh, which is what we want here, that that MK annotation view is showing. So I'm going to say MK annotation view sender annotation. Okay. Make sense? Okay. So we make it so we perform the segue when we call out accessory is tapped. Prepare for segue is going to get called when that happens. And we're going to call this thing to do the actual preparation, checking to make sure we're talking about photos, making sure we're segueing to an image view controller. Okay? Everybody got that? All right, so let's see if that works. Okay, so let's go to this guy. This is our world traveler here. Let's go click down here. It's got this, got a nice image view here. Let's try and click on this, and it segues. Okay, and we're getting the exact same kind of segue we got before. Make sense? Questions about that? All right, so that's really pretty awesome. In you know about 20 minutes, we were 25 minutes, we were able to add full map capability to our iPhone version. But what about our iPad, our iPad version? Uh, let's turn off my phone here and go do the iPad version. So the iPad probably wants to be slightly different uh, than this. Um, although I'm going to start off having it be very similar. What I'm going to do in the iPad is I'm going to get rid of this photographer's table and photos by photographer table. So I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to copy and paste what I just did here in this one. Copy over here, paste, 